Kiwis are probably gaining from it. Olsen Filipina. Filipina still going. Trying to get that pass away. Kevin Tamati. Uh, Olsen Filipina. Coming wide now. James Lulaway outside of his Dana O'Hara. Couldn't be simpler. Akoi. Oh, lovely pass from Akoi. Beautifully done to Olsen Filipina. Be hard to pick. Filipina. Standing there with so much time. Takes a lot of putting down. Shane Barley flicks it on to Olsen Filipina. Filipina pushes off one. Into the second. Still going, Olsen Filipina. It still gets the pass away. Nicely, Shane Barley. Olsen Filipina. Olsen Filipina straight through a little gap. Lays it himself. Olsen Filipina flicks it back to Owen Wright. Owen Wright still going. The nice pass back. James Lillaway. Filipina, uh, again, uh, <clears throat> and I'll probably be saying this all day. I just want to thank you all for being here, for being a part of uh, Carlo Day. And again, all we want to see everyone doing is rubbing shoulders, giving the old uh, eyebrows up to say Kia ora. Um, and so, I'm, I'm privileged to have a couple of people sitting uh, either side of me. Uh, on the right side of me, this, this way, over here, I have a guy by the name of Patrick Skeen. Patrick Skeen is an author. He does a lot of things uh, um, uh, in terms of promoting people, promoting the reach, etc, etc. On my left, that's this side here, who remembers the rugby league back in the early 70s and 80s? You might recall the name, uh, he was infamous on the field back in the day, he used to smash people to pieces. So on my left is Olsen Filipano. Um, and the reason that uh, these two gentlemen are here is to talk about the autobiography that uh, Patrick has done over quite a number of years. I didn't understand or didn't realise that as much as Olsen is uh, Samoan, he was brought up in, uh, uh, what's that place up north called? Oh, that's right, Ngāpuhi. Hey. And, um, you wouldn't think that a Samoan has been brought up in Napoli, so he's got fucker papa to our whānau up there. But if I might first uh, ask the question of the author of uh, the book that he has in front of him, <clears throat> Patrick, how did you come about um, even considering writing something about uh, Olsen? Kia ora. Um, Olsen was, was one of my heroes growing up and uh, was the only person that was able to smash King Wally Lewis and he hadn't had a book about him and I wanted to know his story so I went over to New Zealand up to Napui country where his mother's from in Kakahe and I learned all, uh, all of the stories and uh, I learned about his life before he came to Australia and he went through a lot over here, he went through a lot of racism he went through depression and homesickness but he was able to come through it all and beat King Wally Lewis. So I thought if any man deserves a story to be told, this man deserves it. So um, I'm very proud to be his author. The book, The Big O, is out on April the 9th. And we're going to have, uh, in June or July, we're going to have a big multi function to uh, celebrate the life uh, of this man. His mother is Napui from Kaikohe, and his father is uh, Samoan from Bupolo. Uh, in Western Samoa, so he's uh, the best of both worlds, and I'm thrilled to tell his story, and I think he's someone you should be very proud of. Thank you. Patrick, um, I don't know if you know, but um, under one of the white marquee tents, uh, we have a radio station called Skid Row. Uh, part of uh, their talk today is uh, the radio station is Samoan, uh, so it may well be that uh, once we conclude here, We'll probably go live on the radio station for about 10 or 15 minutes. So Patrick, I know uh, as an author there's a lot of work that you put into uh, what you do. What was one of the hardest parts of uh, getting the, uh, the background to Olsen for the opponent? The hardest part was getting anything out of Olsen. <laughs> He's a very shy, very humble man. 
Uh, when he was playing, he hated the media. He used to hide in the toilets when the media came knocking. So um, getting stuff out of Olsen was the hardest, and that's one of the, the joys of writing it. It's bringing a very humble man's story to light. Um, the joy for me was learning about both the Māori and Samoan cultures, which we're not taught about growing up, about Fano and about respect for elders and all the joys of the culture. So uh, it was very good for me to learn, but the hardest thing was getting Olsen to talk. Thank you, Patrick. So one may ask the question of you, Olsen. It's been 40 years since you've been in this country. <clears throat> Patrick made mention about the hardships that you had uh, in terms of racism and, and how you coped with it. Sadly to say, there's still a lot of that in the uh, NRL today. How do you think, in your own words, uh, do we, how do you think that we can foster better relationship uh, with, with different cultures in the school? I think, you know, I think if we just stick to what we're born for, which is, you know, the play by the league, and to entertain people in, uh, over here in Australia especially, you can see the amount of Polynesians and Maoris that are playing the sport now. And, uh, you know, racism is one thing that will probably never go away, or it's always going to pop its ugly head, but if we stick to our guns and stick to teaching them exactly what we can do on the football field, we'll go a long way. Thank you. So, um, in terms of uh, how the sport has um, progressed over the last 30 odd years, do you think that the way you, your style played back in the day would suit the environment of today's NRL? Yeah, it does, because it's a lot more flair. You know, the Australian style, I believe to me, is, is like a, too much like a robot's game. Don't? They play four, five tackles, and the ball goes up in the air. Whereas now that we've got the cultures, more recent players playing in the sides, which is probably about close to about 40 to 50 percent of it. And then around now, it's a lot more entertaining, and that's what people like to see. Yes. So, uh, Patrick mentioned uh, playing against King Wally Lewis, and that is 30, 30 odd years, 35 years ago. What was one of your most memorable moments against uh, the King, and uh, how you progressed after that? I think just um, you know letting him know that uh, you know that there is. You know, someone of uh, my stature, you know, Polynesian-wise, Maori-wise, Samoan, whatever, they can be a lot better and outplay out him because he was, he was, you know, he had his, uh, he had his ass, his coffee and yes, and everything else. But you know, it all takes, uh, comes to an end. But what happens on the football field? And I did that to him on the football field, and, <laughs> as you know, the rest of his history. Yes, indeed it is. I know that um, uh, King Ronnie has uh, had a lot of uh, stories written about him uh, and I'm actually uh, uh, very impressed that uh, Patrick has taken the time uh, to uh, learn about your, your, your papa papa, your history um, and that has been put out in book form um, and, and so I want to thank you also and as I said uh, we have Radio Skidro here who would dearly love to spend some time with you uh, and to get that message out live. Um, and um, Patrick, uh, is there any closing uh, words that you would like to say uh, with regards to our book? I'm very much looking forward to uh, the Māori function we put on to, to honour Olsen. And uh, I just want to say that uh, I've spoken to King Wally Lewis and he's finally, after 35 years, admitted that Olsen got the better of him, so that was a great achievement. <laughs> so, uh, again, uh, both to uh, Patrick and Olsen Philippana, I want to say again thank you for being a part of this day, and um, what's going to happen is I'm actually going to walk you down to uh, Radio Skid Row, and we want to go live there with your permission. Thank you. Your permission is accepted. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Go down.
after that first test, Tony. James to finish a little away and exactly what he is. Here we go. The ball comes out to Kevin Tammany. He takes it through. Tops it up to Austin Filipano. He stands in the tackle. James Deloy positions himself between two tacklers, but he shows so, so much strength and determination underneath the post. Right in front of the post. New Zealand go out to a 10-point lead. Austin Filipano with the ball. Beautifully taken. Superb. Got the best of the West, Mandroot. Big city, Mandroot. Uh, Chikoni Mawa, it is swimming pool or the Mandroot. Uh, Pia, it is sponsorship. The sponsor is the Maori Wardens Australia Incorporated. Me te karurong mai reko te te hupungi mama ma papa ma aria mai ki kuni e ma te te stores e te wanga ngai te hupungi ni koi oki me te kam te mai me te ulo ni te hupungi e te wanga ki te ora ai te avate ni so aria mai e te tua te ni te orang urmata ki pa Smith Music on e te rane te wanga ngai te ka ravia e te kam te ki ni ma te i rawiri koi te tangata aka atia te mama i te anganga i tira e pera atu i runga te pi ara atu i tira i ama ko ki ka ina ora mai te aki te atu i te ma pu tane te ara mai i rite tira ko ki Patrick Skin e tana pu ko ki the big o the life and times of Olsen Filipina Pacific Revolution pioneer Kiorana Kiorana Kiora Talafalafa great to see the whole Pacific family together today. How are you today, Patrick? Every day is a blessing. Yes, every day is a blessing. Yes, man. Now, now um, we've got you on board. Tell us a bit more about your book. Uh, my book is about one of the great international heroes of rugby league. His name is Olsen Filipina, and he's uh, half Napui, half Samoan, and he played 29 tests for New Zealand, and no one had ever written a book about him, and he's, uh, he's a pivotal figure in rugby league. He's one of the first big-time Polynesians to come and play in the NRL. It's now 48%, so he paved the runway. He went through a lot, a lot of racism. Um, a lot of the first Polys uh, had to go through a lot to play here. They weren't really welcome. But he left New Zealand um, to, to come and play here at the age of 23. And he's the first player to outplay King Wally Lewis. So Wally Lewis is an immortal in rugby league, but Olsen was too big, too hard, too strong for him. And he'd never um, had a book written on him, and it was really interesting under New Zealand coach who knew how to handle Polynesian players. You don't abuse them, you don't mess with their confidence, you talk to the mothers, you bring the whanau in. Yes. Uh, he played like a superhero. Mm. Under Australian coaches, he was hot and cold because they used to shout at people and um, they had a one-size-fits-all approach. They didn't have customised man management back in the days. Right. And now the coaches today have to do that. They have to adjust for a Polynesian lifestyle and work with family and, mm. and, uh, and, and not, not overtly abuse people. So uh, this is the first of uh, a cultural wave that has completely changed rugby league. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow. And uh, the man himself, is he is he here today? Yeah. He's standing right in front of you. Can you see you please? Olsen, come in front of the camera. Come here. Well, it's a privilege to meet you on Cook Islands program. It is Tangata Kurumakime ka tutu papa a mao i te rā i pera katoa ka tutu a Māori mai ne te a tā katoa karongoro mai ne ko yugi no te a Tangata tuapoa i tōna tuato ko yugi ko Olsen Filipina te a e akarakara mai ne ko tu e akarongoro mai ne ko tu i te rā. So what I was just saying to my people is it's a privilege to meet Olsen Filipina a rugby legend and he's here with us so we will be conversing in Cook Islands Maori and also in English as well so both sides of the coin can understand what we're talking about this morning so it's a privilege to meet you in, in person lovely to meet you so so awesome Philippa, Aina. so you're the king of the year uh, as Harmon because you're trying to compare yourself with Wallace to the Samoan or for the Maoris or for us the king Aku rumah kami itu sangat terpilih. Jadi, kamu mengenai mahu kita apa tuh perlu tuan tuan tu. Aku rumah kami ini kotor. 
I will also not just ask you, because he did mention about uh, Wallace, the King Wallace uh, of uh, Queensland. So, are you going to be the, the Samoan King or a football, or are you going to be the Kiwi King? I'm, not, I'm going to be the Polynesian King. Oh, I love that. Yes, that means we arms. both are included in the tribe. Right, yes. Oh, I love you to the moon and around the world. That's really good. Thank you. Thank you to, for being a super pioneer for the uh, Polynesians. Yes, that is true. We all Polynesians, wherever you that's go, exactly right. that's all us. That's right. And thank you again for everything you have done to put the, the Polynesian or the Pacific Ocean in the north to the top of the world. Now we are seen. So you are our king. So you're going to be invited to Cook Island Bay coming up in August. So bring your book. Bring yourself and bring your team. Thanks very much. Uh, well, we haven't finished yet. I just, wanna, I just wanted to ask you a few more questions now. In your times as a rugby player, I guess everything is in this book, yes? Yes, that's right. Now, can you give us a little uh, snippet of what you encountered as a rugby player back in your in your days? Just a little bit so people who will want to buy your book. Yeah? That's the secret. What is the, se the secret is you know, the racism that I crossed, uh, that I popped when I was there, being called any name you can think of, and not letting it get to me, and just playing the game itself and producing and showing the fans, especially Australian fans, what we can do on the football field. And that was my main goal. And uh, now, because of, there's over about 40% of Polynesians playing the game in NRL, you know, it, it's like a dream for me to come true. Mm. Oh. Beautiful. And um, what about the, the our young ones these days? What can you see? Is there any difference between your time and their time? I think the money is a, 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 a big difference. Mm -hmm. it, it's a matter of, um, you know, trusting yourself, trusting the manager and, and believing in your ability to, and um, giving what you're worth. Mm -hmm. But the uh, ideas and everything else, like, you know, I was on about $300 a game oh, compared to what they are now. But yes. now, you know, after all these years, we're finally getting the money that we deserve. Mm. And, um, and it's up there with the best of Australian players. Mm. And, and today is the day of Waitangi Day, which is bringing all our uh, New Zealand families together and also our Polynesian communities together. Now, for you to be here and people hearing you on the radio, uh, what uh, what sort of results were you looking at in that field? Um, you know, just uh, you know, making sure that everyone that uh, you know believes in themselves and has a good time. And this is what it's all about. You yes. know, when we have these functions and yes. festivals, is getting together and catching up with everyone. Because as you know, our families seem to extend every six, every twelve months. And, yes. You know, finding out and who's new and um, who's who. So, you know, this is what it's all about. That's awesome. Well, you know what? Thank you for being on our program today. And we hope that we will see you again in the future in our other um, events as well, yes? Yes. yes, thanks very much for having me. Oh, most welcome. So there's the book, everybody, and um, hopefully we will hear more of this uh, awesome rugby player, Olsen Filipina. Now, is there anything else you wanted to share with us, uh, Patrick, uh, about your book? April 9, there you go. It's going to be out April 9, where? Are they also on eBay? Okay, there you go. There you go, everybody. So we're going on a short break at the moment, so we'll hear um, some of our Cook Islands music right now. Try started by a mistake from Gary Kimball, and uh, it was the easiest of tries I think Tony I've seen in the test game. So simple indeed. When you watch the replay, it's glorious to see. But Dean Bell was the man that did it. Here's the pass that starts Dean Bell off on this tremendous run, and the call was inside. He knew it too. So it was a simple try. As he has to drag it in this time, it's deflected by an Australian. They stop, put the brakes on. 
and they'll flick it out again beautifully to Olsen Filipana who just has to jazz away with the easiest of runs no one to beat well super play and really tidied up so beautifully by Gary Prime Stop. of course New Zealand have scored under the goalpost which makes Filipano's task as a goal kicker so simple the key was will hit the front wow this scoreline is unbelievable nobody I'm sure was predicting that 18 points would have been scored this early in the game Olsen Filipina looking for inspiration a vital kick and it's there and the extra points put New Zealand in the lead by four so here we are with Olsen uh, Filipina Olsen how did you feel when you first heard there was a book being written about you uh, I've found it hard to believe but you know it's, it's good it's going to be out there now exactly what I've uh, basically went through when I was uh, playing over here in the, in the early um, 80s and um, now I'm proud uh, you know the book's going to be out there. So you left New Zealand at the age of 23 from an amateur competition to come and play in the professional rugby league what was the big change for you? I think just the city life and how fast everything was over here and um, you know, it took a while to adjust, but, uh, you know, I'm still trying to adjust to it now. Under Australian coaches, and uh, you played under Australian coaches and New Zealand coaches, what was the difference? Well, here I'd, it was hard to understand exactly what the coaches wanted, wanted you to do, and, um, you know, it was too hard for me to understand. But whereas in New Zealand, I was given a free reign and, you know, left to play my own game. But um, I just never seem to have been able to adjust to it. King Wally Lewis, an NRL immortal, um, one of the greatest, if not the greatest of all time. But he couldn't have his way with you, could he? No, it, it is one of the you know it's, it's the highlight of my career actually, playing uh, out playing the world's best. But there's a few uh, circumstances that sort of led to that, and. Um, you know, if you want to find out about it, read the book. So the book's coming out on April 9. There's a big launch in New Zealand. Uh, all your friends, family, all your players, uh, ex-teammates ex are going to come together for it. Um, looking forward to that? Yeah, it's going to be one of the highlights of my life, catching up with everybody that had a lot to do with my rugby league career when I first started. And going back to where it all started from, the club at Mangalore East, is, you know, I can't wait to get back there. And back when you started, there were hardly any Polynesians uh, in, in, in the game of rugby league. But what did you used to tell them all the way back in 1980? Yeah, it won't be long before you find out what Polynesians actually are. And uh, as you can see, the result, we've got about over 40% of Polynesians playing rugby league now. And it's a dream come true for me. So the haka is very famous all around the world, Olsen, it's, it's very famous, but uh, back in, from 1978 to 1986, you performed the haka with the New Zealand Kiwis. What did it mean to you? You know, it, it meant it brought the best out of us, and you know, to me it was like, um, you know, the warrior, like everyone's got a warrior inside of them, and that brought it out in a lot of our players whenever we did that haka, and even watching it now being performed, you know, it's been chills up my spine so without that a lot of these successes and wins wouldn't have been able to happen. Certainly the pressure is on him tonight. This to equal the scores. Olsen Filipina from East in Sydney where he now plays, formerly from Mangari, 28 year old veteran of 18 tests. This is 19. Already the crowd starting to boo. Tremendous kick. Well, it looked as though it was going to drop short. Olsen Filipina has just equaled the scores. That's his biggest kick I've seen Olsen do for many years, and it's half time. So, five years ago, I wrote a story for The Guardian Australia on Olsen Filipina. It was called The Forgotten Story of Olsen Filipina, and I was writing stories for The Guardian about. St stories about Australians from Aboriginal and multicultural backgrounds that hadn't really been celebrated in the mainstream. The story went viral on The Guardian and I got contacted by people saying you should write a, a book about Olsen, his story is amazing. 
So I did a lot of research and it took me two and a half years to write the book and I went to New Zealand and I learnt all about the Māori culture and the Samoan culture and also the South, South Auckland culture. So Olsen's mother was uh, a Māori uh, born in Kaikohe up in, uh, up in Northland and she was a part of the Napui tribe and his father is Samoan uh, from Upolo in Samoa and they all um, came together in South Auckland uh, like a lot of, uh, there was a lot of mixed Polynesian families uh, in South Auckland. And Olsen became the first hero of South Auckland, this new Pacifica blend. And uh, he was inspired a lot of people. And at the age of 23, he left New Zealand to come to Australia to try his hand in what is now the NRL. And in Australia, um, a lot of people say he was hot and cold, but he was a very good player. But for New Zealand, he was one of the greatest players ever. And the reason behind that was... Uh, under New Zealand coaches who understood how to manage Polynesian players, he was a superhero. And under Australian coaches who didn't quite understand how to manage the Polynesians at the time, he, um, he, he, they didn't get the best out of him. He was the first player to dethrone the great king, King Wally Lewis, in the 1985 Test Series, and he played amazingly, and that is why Olsen is remembered by a lot of people for the fact that he was able to beat one of Australia's greatest, if not the greatest ever rugby league player. And it's with great pride that I've been able to tell this story. And it's split into two pieces. It's split into the New Zealand part. So I'm educating Australian fans about what a great player Olsen was in New Zealand and where he came from. And I'm also educating the New Zealand fans about what happened to Olsen when he left New Zealand and came to play, for Austra play in Australia. And it's very important because back then there wasn't the internet and he kind of disappeared for New Zealand fans. But he went through a lot. He went through depression, he went through a lot of racism. And now, today, uh, Pacific and Polynesian players are 48% of the NRL. And they owe it to the pioneers, the people that came before them, that paved the way, that put the runway down for the players to follow and have completely changed the game of rugby league culturally, in playing style. Um, there's been a lot, of, a lot of different changes and it all comes down to a group of pioneers, the first ones like Olsen Filipina. Trying to run it wide, Olsen Filipina's found a gap. Has he got the support? Olsen Filipina finding some form. Good tackle on Wayne Pierce. Olsen Filipina intercepting. Getting the pass up beautifully to... Dana O'Hara. Olsen Filipana uh, has been a childhood dream of mine to meet. I remember the days back in the 80s uh, when I would watch with glee the way he uh, presented himself on and off the field. I, I do remember as a young person uh, some of the things that I was going through as a young one. I also knew that Olsen was going through those same trials and tribulations uh, as a young adult. Uh, not just as a young adult, but as a Samoan uh, who then also represented New Zealand. And of course, he Ngāpui side. Uh, and, and that uh, just, that just uh, puts absolute wonderful memories of uh, what type of man he, he was back then and he is today. Uh, uh, can you tell me something about uh, Olsen? <clears throat> so, to start with, I, I, I didn't actually understand until uh, later on uh, that Olsen was actually uh, had um, ties to, to our, our Maori culture. And um, so uh, Olsen has always been uh, a person who was forthright in what, he, what he'd done, both on and off the field. Uh, so it comes as no surprise that all these years later there is a, a, an autobiography about Olsen uh, and the things and the trials and tribulation that he has gone through uh, as, he's, as he's come from the, uh, the late 70s, 80s and up to now. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful that uh, he's come through all of that and we're here at this point today. Olsen Filipina looking for the quick pass. Friend has it out. Filipina. Filipina's in a gap. Terry Jack coming across to tackle him. Pierce. Wrapped up. Olsen Filipina steals the ball. Well done. Great play by 
zadnji selak.